Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out Wall of Fingers by developer Lonely Troll Productions. This is the second of our LD28 coverage and another game that was designed in 48 hours. The premise today, outrun a Wall of Fingers. The theme again, by the way, is you only get one. Uh, how it is that we're using this uh, theme, I believe, is to say that we've got five stages and one life, as you can see on the title screen here. So we're going to be chased by a Wall of Fingers, I know pretty interesting topic, and we're going to be collecting mass, which should imbue our character with some sort of special powers to allow us to navigate the levels more efficiently. Now, I have to say, upon starting this up, I was kind of taken back uh, to the era of DOS games and a little bit of, like, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, partially because of the intro music, partially because of the strange premise and the kind of old-school bitmappy sprites. I don't know, it kind of gave me a good feeling in a strange, nostalgic way, so let's give it a st uh, start and try it out by pressing R. My current reality has become less forgiving. Alright, so here we are in the game world. We play as this strange, funky guy with a bit of a rat tail behind him. Looks like he's straight out of the 80s or something. Uh, and there are some strange impediments. That was a little springboard there, and we've got this very alien-looking landscape that we need to traverse. Uh, you'll notice this mask there that I just picked up, uh, which has transformed me into a jumping monster. Uh, in a good way, of course, and we're going to use all of these various springboards to try and propel us up. Uh, and now I actually have the ability to grapple walls, which I'm not sure is a thing that I necessarily had before. Uh, granted, I'm not particularly fast at this, though, so I've got to be accurate and quick and make it to the end, which I could not do. Uh, each time, if we die, we start over from the beginning. Uh, a premise that is not generally embraced too often anymore, but in this case gives it a little bit of a hardcore appeal, which I find kind of interesting. Uh, particularly discordant music in the background, which, uh, you don't hear a lot of soundtracks that sound this way anymore. But I don't know if that's for a reason, or if it's just because uh, people's tastes have changed. It's a very strange group of noises that are happening at the same time. I think it really has a lot to do with the fact that sound processing technology has changed so much since back then. And that's how compositions used to be made, maybe not so much now. So we've got a lovely mosaic transition into the next level where we'll pick up a different mask. And this one actually allows us to fly. Now if you notice, every time I jump, there's that skittering sound that happens. And I believe that is just sort of the game's way of infusing a little bit more life and dynamism into the soundtrack. I kind of like it. You couldn't really ask for much more uh, discordant music when we're looking at this. So we're going to fly through most of this, hopefully making our way through to the end. And I have to say, what is going on in the background? looks like a pile of band-aids, but I guess it's supposed to be all these fingers. Like, the premise is so strange. I have no idea what the wall of fingers is meant to represent. If it's meant to represent anything, it may just be going for strange. Uh, and I kind of feel like this is one of those, like, a lost Action 52 game a little bit. This could be right after Cheetah Men or something. Um, all in all, I find it so odd that it's almost kind of compelling. So I'm going to pick up the cat mask again, or the caterpillar, whatever this is, just because I like what it does to the music, and then we're going to fly along in here. I feel like there's a much smaller chance of me getting stuck if I have this mask, because I can kind of fly through everything. Uh, the wall of fingers is kind of terrifying me now, and I feel like this is almost like a shout-out to the wall of flesh from Terraria, even though it probably has nothing to do with it. Uh, but it, it works as a strange premise. I really think that a lot of people's attention is probably going to be grabbed by just the fact that we're going to be outrunning fingers with no basic reason as to why. And by the way, I've never gotten this far, so I have no idea what's still in store for us. There are only five levels, though, so I've got to be most of the way through. But what I'm seeing right now is if we could take this concept and take it even further, have a variety of different soundtracks, a variety of different levels with themes, uh, and way more masks, I think there could be kind of a cool future for something like this, and I would definitely embrace it. Uh, I'm totally picturing, like, the Kid Chameleon vibe. You know, go the 80s, early 90s retro, like, crazy game world thing, and just take it to as weird as it can get. I mean, Wall of Fingers by itself, pretty weird. But how much weirder could it be? And, okay, it looks like I'm making it to the final level already, which is a little frightening. Am I a platforming dynamo? I'm not sure. I'm going to continue to stick with this mask because I really feel like I do the best with it. Hopefully I'm not going to make a poor choice here by going to the bottom. Uh, one thing this developer definitely did very well is they made it very clear what's in the foreground and what's in the background, and that's a thing that I've learned uh, from all my time doing, you know, 2D level design. Very, very important, and it really makes the uh, big difference when the player is trying to sight-read something when they want to go fast. 
you know? This isn't Sonic, but you still gotta go fast, so you gotta be able to see where you're going. Certainly some rough edges, you know, some of these textures loop in strange ways. I see these edges with the green grass and stuff, and, you know, it doesn't always look the best, but we made it to the final end. Why are we going in this man's face anyway? Who knows? Looks like the wall- oh, the wall is way behind us. We crushed that level. And what happens now? I think I'm out. Oh my god. What is that? Do I have to fight that? Maybe not. Alright, so I guess that was the end. Uh, we win, and we've made the title screen significantly brighter. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, I kind of want to restart just to see if anything has changed. No, okay, I guess we are just going in a loop, but I have to say, that was kind of fun. You know, it was simple. It was definitely humble. Uh, but it, somewhere in its unpretentiousness, and I know this is kind of a big claim considering there's not a whole lot going on here, but I feel like there's some fun to be had in this game, and I could see that if someone got stuck on this or tried to start over every time, you know, provided they were enticed enough by the premise, I could see people trying this a few times to try to get to the end. Uh, and unfortunately, I've spoiled the ending for you now. You get to see that there is a crazy dude with a psychedelic face waiting for you if you do make it that far. Uh, so I guess now you don't necessarily have to do it, but you should still do it, because that's really that's the goal here. It's, it's all about the journey, it's not about the destination, right? And plus, that soundtrack is just crazy. I want to go check out this musician and hear more of their work, because this is not something that I've run into on a regular basis anymore. This is music straight out of the uh, early 90s, late 80s, and I kind of love it. So, again, may not be for everybody, but I think it's pretty cool. I recommend, if you want to, go check it out. It is totally free. Link's going to be in the description. Uh, and let me know what you think of a premise like this. I think the, the idea of having masks that change your abilities is really fun, and I think there's still never been a game that's really taken that to the best conclusion. I mean, Kid Chameleon's the closest I think we're gonna get. So, maybe somebody could do more work with that in the future. Um, I would like to personally see some more, uh, Wall of Fingers happen in the future, and, and I don't know, maybe it could. But it's all up in the air. Anyway, that's going to do it for another episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, feel free to check out the description for more on this game if you want to go check it out yourself. It is free like all the LD games that I'm going to be playing for coverage on this. Uh, and of course, if you'd like, leave your feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Oh, geez, I am as close as possible to losing here. Uh, but I'd love to hear your feedback, what you think about such a simple game. You know, outrunning a wall of fingers. Is that enough for you? Do the fingers look too much like band-aids to be fulfilling? hard to say. I can't believe I made it out of that alive. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it for another episode. Thank you again, and please be sure to come back again tomorrow. New episodes are every single day, so I'll see you back here on my channel, youtube.com slash rockwithsmile. So I hope you have a terrific night, and I hope this game doesn't haunt your dreams. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you tomorrow.